Gentlemen, boys and girls, together as we call upon the most amazing kid. <laughs> I got mine. <laughs> oh, I forgot my thank you. I'm mad talking. I love it. I love it. What are you about? Oh my gosh. Joey Newcomb, this is like my first time Zooming, so I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> Are you on Zoom? Are we on Zoom? Give me the Zoom. <laughs> Let me make sure we're on Zoom over here. We have, <laughs> we have somebody coming on Zoom. One second, one second. I just finished this wedding, and by the way, this hat right here, a random guy came over to me in the middle of the wedding. He put the hat on. He said, it's for you. Mommy. It fits you perfectly. So I said, you know what? That's mommy's dream. One second. Can we get the... What? One second. We're getting the Zoom. What's the Zoom ID? I have absolutely no idea. You're asking... You think I... I'm just on Instagram. I make believe I know what I'm doing, but I have no clue. What's the <laughs> Zoom... Okay, hold on. You need the Zoom ID. Yeah. Okay, we're getting it for you. Hold on. Um, guys, Reb Yosef is coming on. Have no fear. He's not going to let you down. Eight three zero. Okay, we got the zoom. Oh, you got it. You got it. Log on. Log on. Yeah, they, oh, people are writing the zoom number. Between me, between me and Reb Yosef, we're gonna have like an epic fail with the uh, uh, figuring stuff out over here. The idea is to thank Hashem. We gotta thank Hashem. 
What, we're logged on? Yeah, we're logged on, logged on. Okay, we're logged on. You got that? Call in. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, right here. Hold on, guys. Do you see me on, on Instagram? Oh, now it's fine. Okay. You got it? Hold on. Okay, so, um, Reb Joey, you're going to have to take off the volume off of Zoom. Okay. Now there's no echo. We're good? You you put the you took off the volume completely off of Zoom? Let me see. Yeah. Oh, all the way. Yeah. All the way here. Uh, There's an echo. Why do I have an echo by me? Oh, now I don't have an echo. What'd you just do? One second, yeah. Oh, should I, should I turn off the volume? For Zoom, yeah, completely. Okay, one second. Not, not off of Instagram, because then you won't hear me. <laughs> Guys, are you having fun as we figure all this stuff out? Hello, Mikey it's Moss. Okay. Did you get my Did you get my message? Is it good now? Is it coming through? Is it coming through? Perfect. <laughs> now it's perfect. Thank you. Yeah. Hold on, guys. Does everyone hear me on Instagram? Thumbs up if you hear me and and Rabi Yosef. Depending on how I feel, I'm gonna call you Rabi Yosef or Rabi Joey. Okay. Wait, do you, do you hear me? Hi. Everybody. Thank you, Hashem. Boy. I don't know. It's Reb Joey. Here. Yeah. What, what is your name on Zoom? Uh, what are we on? Joey Newcomb. Joey Newcomb. Well, the real Joey Newcomb, please stand up. Hold on, we're finding you on 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 Zoom. Um, everybody who uh, wants to come on the Zoom, go on my story, and the link is over there. Um, people are like, Rev Joey, how you doing over there? Yeah, how you doing over there? How you doing over there? You don't understand. You were like one of the most – I was looking forward to this live for so long. I was so excited to have you on. Oh wow! Listen, this is just for me. To me, but I, I listen. I heard all about the Hale Gashmi Adar Mamzer. Lahavdil, Lahavdil. Reb Joey, can I just tell you something amazing? Yeah. Is that you have Zoomers? Do you see Joey? Thumbs up. See him. Also, you're the only one that doesn't see him. Go find him. Everybody else, thumbs up. I don't, oh, I I see Reb Joey. <laughs> With this guitar, you can't miss him. You can't miss him. I got real put comments on it. People have a problem on Zoom. All right. So, no one, no one can enter on your stories because you're doing a live. It's good. It's stories. Good. <gasps> oh, it's on my. It's on my post. I posted it. I posted it. I, I posted the um, the Zoom on my post. Hold on, should I just do? It's fine. They can watch it here. Um, oh, someone said, "What is the most? What's the amazing thing I want to tell Reb Joey? Reb Joey, welcome to the Shimmy Schmooze where we're very ADD. I never get to the point. I always forget my question. <laughs> can you open up the window and the door? Okay. So what I wanted to tell you was number one. Okay, can we just check out the pious, everybody? <laughs> It's like 18 feet long. It's crazy. You play guitar with them. <laughs> the high leg of is mamish. They're really high leg. And, and you're high leg because today my messages were coming in and people are like, who is this Joey Newcomb? Who is this Joey Newcomb? And they went to check you out. And I'm talking about people are completely unaffiliated and they fell in love with you. Isn't that amazing? Wow. Wow, wow, wow. So, like, usually, usually when people see the pious and the beard, you know, they run away. They run away. They run I'm the happy other way. To hear that. <laughs> they love your positive energy. They love your your love for for all Jews. I mean, it's in it's in your songs. It doesn't matter if you're Litvish, Hasidish, Ashkenaz, Sephardi. It doesn't matter. A yid is a yid is a yid. Yeah? Oh, my Amazing. gosh. You said it so deep. I'm going to be the next Joey New. Be careful. <laughs> you know, you have competition out there. But I, I, I have to tell you, 
First, of all, tell us about the Pennsylvania. What are you doing in Pennsylvania? Oh, Pennsylvania. Hey, look at Pennsylvania. I'll tell you, <laughs> we, we were driving today. We were driving today one hour, two hours, three hours. I was like, when are we going to get to this place? Suddenly, we started seeing some horses, some cows, mamas. Hey, look at avoid this. We looked at the sign. I played at a wedding. I played at a wedding today and on a farm. On a farm. Your hat. This hat, in the middle of the wedding, I was playing music. A guy comes over to me and says, I want to present you with this hat. You made me smile. You made me happy. Here's a hat. I said, even if I don't usually wear this hat, because of the way you presented it to me, I'm wearing the hat from now on. I don't know if my wife's going to accept it when I come home. But <laughs> <laughs> I, I feel it. like I feel like your wife has let you done so many things that up until now. <laughs> not going to make it or break it. By the way, leads me to my next thing. Hold on. Do you guys still hear me? Because I just took off the volume. Okay, good. All I, I, um, BZ, you're my, my go-to for your thumbs up, my BZ family. Yeah. So I want to, to tell you, to tell the Oilam, thank you, Hashem, for your amazing wife. Can we give a big shout-out to the Rebbitzin? Because I always say, behind every tzaddik is an Asha Schayel who loves you, who supports you, who encourages you. And we can't be who we are without our spouses. Because if they weren't supporting us, we would just be nagunim in our house. Right? A hundred percent. By the way, by the way, it's not easy. That's for sure. And, and when I left today to Pennsylvania, my wife said, she said, she said, I'll miss you. But I know that you're making people smile. So it's all worth it. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I love said. that. Thank so you, Rabbits in New <laughs> I love, are, are you still living in Queens? No, I'm uh, living in Farakaway, New York. Queens is the same thing. It's just all the, it's, it's Farakaway, Queens, and Five Towns. <laughs> it's definitely not. Like, every time I do events, I'm like, I'm, I'm in Five Towns. They're like, shimmy, you're in Farakaway. Watch yourself. <laughs> right? <laughs> That's right. The oil in Farakaway doesn't like to admit that they're in the Five Towns. And the oil in the Five Towns doesn't want to admit they're in Farakaway. But Kulona Banea Melech, love is. His mother is his biggest fan. Is your mother your biggest fan? She is, and she's probably on right now about to embarrass me. <laughs> wait, wait, your mother is like, where would, you, where would I find her? Would I find her on a Zoom or would I find her on the, in, the live? On You'll probably find her on the live as Sarah, top producer. <laughs> Sarah, Remington, Sarah, we love you. Thank you for bringing such a light into the world. <laughs> Thank you from the bottom of our hearts. This is amazing. So um, people were like blown away. They're like, where did this... Guy, come, I don't want to call you a guy because you're really alien and you're really holy. They're like, where did he come from? Questions. Where is this alien tzaddik from? What's your story? Where was he born? Which school? Why did I not find out about until now? Why did it take the thank you Hashem song for us to fi figure out, Reb Joey? People are intrigued by you. They're intrigued. You're so unique. You're so different. Right, guys? Zoomers, Instagram. It's Look at all the hearts. Look at all the hearts, Joey. People are loving you. Unbelievable. So I don't even know where to begin. Could you tell me where I should begin? <laughs> <laughs> you got to begin at the roots, at the roots where it all comes from. You know? Yeah. At the roots. The mama, the tata, the zayda, the baba. Everybody comes from somewhere. Everybody comes from somewhere. But, you know, when you tap into the roots, sometimes you can realize the essence of, of what it's about, you know? <laughs> I love that, guys. Do you hear that, boys and girls? There are a lot of boys and girls on. See, the thing is, on, on Instagram, I don't know who's watching. You look at Zoom, you're seeing all these beautiful, like, hey, look at little Tzadikim, and girls, they're watching you, and they're taking every word in. Wow. So, I would never have thought that you're from Kew Garden Hills. <laughs> <laughs> so when most people, by the way, most people, you look at me, right? Yeah. So you look at me, and you wonder, like, where's this guy from? Maybe Williamsburg, maybe Uman. Maybe I'm through. Tzvaz. Tzvaz, maybe. The way, you know, I speak a regular English, so maybe, like, you know, he's a flip-out wrestling guy. Like, there's so many titles. There's so many titles. The, the funny... Do you speak Hebrew? I do. I do. And I speak Yiddish. I went to Siach Yitzchak. And I went to Siach Yitzchak, the school in Farakaway. And they spoke Yiddish there? They taught us in Yiddish. I even remember. I remember... <laughs> I remember having to pass the test in Yiddish. Mama Shikamal. People are well, the saying, mind... sing thank you, Hashem. Guys, calm it down. Do you think we're not going to have the Joey <laughs> sing thank you, Hashem? 
Of course. We're good to go. <laughs> okay. So my, my father's a Balchuva. Both my parents are Balchuva. And my father's from College Point. My mother is from Kew Garden Hills, Queens. Okay. And when they became from, my father went to Or Sameach, and I went to Shayashim. And when he reconnected to his roots, my father's family is from Bell's Hasidim. Yeah, yeah. Serious? Wow. Bell's Mind So my father became from, he put on long pants and a back of shirt. He never forced me to do it. Never did he force me. Not I once. love that. He's like, when you I, do you. Yeah, and I, this is all by my own decision. My own, you know, what, what, until I was about like five years old, I had this, not the beard when I was five, but like I had the pants, you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> but, uh, You're like a real smarty, that facial hair comes out of four years old. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> Well, the mice, uh, you know, it all, it, the truth is, the long pants and the beard came after I got married. This is, you know, all time. Because the wife, the, the Isha's Kyle wanted it? Or you're like, listen, I didn't tell you what we were dating, but I have, <laughs> I have to break the news to you. I think the that most, coming on. right, well, most people, when they met me, they knew it was coming. So, like, she sort of, a, she never, like, you know, she just said, all right, whatever you want, you know. <laughs> I have to tell you, so when I, when I was, like, searching Joey Newcomb. I'm like, I need to find his story has to be somewhere, which by the way, he really doesn't have a story like for Rockaway, Yeshiva, you know, <laughs> simple story, but it's, it's never simple. I found a video on YouTube, guys. You could check it out. I should really post it on my Instagram. It's epic. Uh -oh. And it says, Joe, could you put the um, mute, mute that um, or lower it? Thanks. Uh, it says Joey Newcomb ja and slash Jackie Mason. So I'm like, oh my gosh, I have to check out this guy who's <laughs> Im imitating Joey Newcomb and Jackie Mason. And 10 minutes in, my, my son is like, Iman, that's Joey. I'm like, no, <laughs> he's clean shaven. What you talking about? You know? He's like, no, no, that's Joey. I couldn't believe it. First of all, you, you look like a completely different person. And second of all, you are hysterical. You saw that, huh? Yeah. I can't believe it. Eh? Eh? Yeah. Like, like on point, Reb Joey, did you always have a sense of humor? Do you think it's something that you're born with or you like, you, you picked it up along the way? I don't know. My father, I'll be honest with you, my father is a, is a pretty uh, crazy guy. <laughs> he's, a pretty, <laughs> he's pretty, he's pretty mishigga. He's a prank, simcha, always making jokes, always, you know, acting silly. You know, when people call us crazy, they mean we're simcha. They just don't know how to describe us any exactly. other way. So they call I, us cray-cray. I, cray. I tell people to this day that crazy is the best compliment you can give me. You know why? Because if, if, if people are smiling because of me, I'll take it. Call me crazy. You know? Mission but... accomplished. Yes. <laughs> and and I, I love when they're like, no, don't take it the wrong way. I'm like, no, bring it on. I am crazy. And I ain't changing for nobody. Well, by the way, my father, my father it speaks the way you, when you hear like, how why over there? Had that, that whole thing. That's my father. That's exactly how he talks. That's where I got it, bro. <laughs> he's, he's the Hawaii original. He's the OG. He's the original. He comes to me out there and be like, hey, you're safe over there. How? Huh? Why are you doing over there? <laughs> mommy, mommy. Oh, my God. We need to bring your father on. That's right. That would be crazy. Oh, my gosh. That would be epic. <laughs> so, hold on. If, if your father was like that as a father, how were you in school? Like, what were you like in school? I got into trouble. <laughs> no question. There's surprise, no question. surprise. I got into trouble. My father's a fascinating guy. Every time I got into trouble, he was like, what can I expect? You're a newcomer over there. That's what he, <laughs> he would tell me that. And then, and then my mother my mother would get, like, annoyed. Like, he's supposed to be annoyed at him. And, uh, and my father, you know, but, but he, he, was, he was good. But they loved me. I mean, I, I found that there was, like, a mutual respect. Like, the Rebbies, as much as I made them crazy, they liked it. They, you know? <laughs> yeah. Deep down inside, they liked it. And, and I feel like they probably, you're, you're that kid that, they look at it and they say, that kid is going to like turn around and be like, I'm going to show you how great I am. <laughs> you know, some of them, some of them. I mean, again, I, I'll never, never in my life, never in my life will I say something bad about somebody. But, but, there, but there are some people that, you know, looked at me in school and said, this guy's just going to, you know, he's never going to be anything great. You know, he just messes around and stuff like that. There were those, there were those, you know. But the, then, you know, yes. the, whole, the whole goal is to show that when you have that life in Chias, and if you're that, you know, prove them wrong. <laughs> you know, 
know what? I, I, I had, um, I was on 13th Avenue. The one day I was doing an event in Bar Park. So I, I looked apart with my braids and I, I was wearing a hat like the one that you're wearing right now. And I looked shimmy style, but it doesn't really pass on 13th Avenue to look like that. And I saw, <laughs> I saw my Mahomes teacher on 13th Avenue and she, she comes, she's like, Shimrit Adar, I'm so proud of you. I hear what you're doing for the clown. She's like, you are the perfect example that there's hope for everyone. It's <laughs> <laughs> great. That's great. That's like when I got on my report card, you know, the, uh, dear Mr. and Mrs. Newcomb, your son has a lot of potential. However, I remember that. I remember those days. <laughs> you want to hear my report card? My report card. I came home. Also, Machon. All my stories are Machon. And I got Fs throughout, like from top to bottom. F, 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 F plus, F minus, if they were nice, if they liked me. I got that F plus. I come <laughs> home, I'm like, how am I going to tell Abba about all my Fs? So I come in and I'm like, Abba, I got my report card. And they're like, they see all these Fs. They're like, Cola F, 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 F. I'm like, Abba, it's fantastic. He's like, ah! <laughs> That's girl, great. I'm so proud of you. <laughs> but um, speaking about your father, Give your father a big shout out. You know why? Ladies and gentlemen, we're giving Reb Joey's father, what do we call him? Re Re Rabbi Newcomb. Yeah, Reb Gedalia. Reb Gedalia. He's a, really a god, though. Reb Gedalia, you know why? Because yeah. <laughs> one day, he just had an epiphany. He's like, I'm going out to Queens Boulevard and I'm going to go get myself a guitar because I'm in the mood of getting a guitar, right? I do, I do my research or what? Wow. <laughs> and he gets the guitar, and lo and behold, he never actually plays it. It just stays there on the corner of the house. And little Joey Newcomb, yo, safe, he says, I think I, I'm going to do a little something, something with that, right? <laughs> Take it away, Joey. A little something, something, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> when I picked up that guitar, I started playing things like, you know... I picked up that guitar. My father bought that guitar. He said, yeah, he remembers playing. He had this like crazy dream in his head. He bought it. It was sitting around the house. I picked it up. And we used to sing. We used to sing Friday. We used to sing. I played, and then we, the books were around, and they were laying around. My father never touched a guitar, here and there, maybe, but I couldn't let go of it, I remember. I had... Listen to what you just said. Girls and boys, he picked up a book to learn a guitar. There was no YouTube. There was no That's Google. Right. We had right. to pick up a book, and you figured it out. The books were laying around. I read the books. I studied it. I started playing the hard thing. The Friday afternoon, the Matzah Shabbos, we used to have a lot of Malkas. My father used to invite people over. We used to sing and dance and fabrang. Well, the mice, uh, I had, I had Rebbe's that told me it's time to put down the guitar. <laughs> no. Yeah. Why? Like, what, what was their reasoning? Because you have to go learn, learn, learn? They felt like they was taking over too much of my... Uh, it's like I couldn't let go of the guitar. I was playing and playing and playing and playing. And so playing. they thought you—they thought you were like addicted to it. Yeah, I don't know. I, maybe they didn't see, you know, the the you know the greatest thing. The Mishnah says the greatest thing you can do is haroya samayla to see the future, to be able to look past what you see in the present. So sometimes you can look at somebody and you calculate him to be a certain way, and you're like. He should do that, he should do that. As opposed to really looking deep inside and looking into the future and saying, this could be the biggest thing in the world, you know? You wow. Know? I can't, can you imagine? Can you imagine? Like, I've had people like that in my life also. They're like, you know, Shimmy, I, I, don't, I don't think uh, you, you should wear that tutu. I, 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 I had somebody tell me, like a very hush of a person. She said, Shimmy, you know, like, 
you know what it means to be besimcha? I'm like, I, I think I try. I don't know. She's like, you know when you go into a car and you have like your favorite jam and you pump up the volume and you close your windows and mom, your mom is get into it. Your neshama get sucked, sucked in. I'm like, yeah, it's amazing. She's like, not so good to be too besimcha. And I was like, Oh gosh! What do you say to that? What do you say to that? I don't know. I, I I've I've heard the opposite. I've heard it's only good to be too basimcha. You know, I mean, the, you know, I don't know what people are worried about. Reb Nachman writes, Reb Nachman writes that it's more dangerous to not be basimcha because that could lead to a place which is more dangerous than what simcha could lead to. Let's say a dangerous place. Let's just assume that simcha could lead to a dangerous place of like you know uh, carelessness and whatever. Rav Nachman writes, you're more in danger in the place of not simcha to lead to the bad place called yes. depression. Yes. Than from simcha to lead to carelessness. When a person is besimcha, it's, it's so obvious. People, people have a hard time accepting it. I, I don't know why. Maybe people have a hard time if they don't feel besimcha. I don't know what it is. But to be able, when you're besimcha, you can get through anything. When you're content, <laughs> you can get through coronavirus. You can get through whatever it is. If, if you have that ability, even if someone is dealing with a hard, a hard job, he goes to work and he can't deal with this client, with that client, with that client. If he has an inner sense of simcha, he works on it and he builds it and he always maintains that simcha, then people can make him as crazy as you want and he'll deal with it. The moment you lose the simcha, that's when things will break you apart. It's, it's obvious. You know? Wow, that's, that's really deep. Speaking about that, I feel like simcha is something they have to work on. It's a fire in you and it's so much easier to work on simcha when you're surrounded with people who are positive and lift you up and, uh, and pick you up when you can't pick yourself up anymore. So it's so important to, to surround yourself with people like that. And you came out with a song, is it recent times with Rashbi? Yeah, yeah, very recent. I know. And I feel like that's like a fire, like you said, like the fire of Rav Shimon. What, what, what was your goal with that song? He literally <laughs> just came out with this song, ladies and gentlemen, boys and yeah. girls. This, so, by the way, I just want to let you know, I'm getting nonstop WhatsApps here. I'm loving this interview, loving the other <laughs> For people I've never heard of before, I don't know who's texting me here. Like, yeah, it's going off the hook. <laughs> Wait, can I tell you something funny? So, the guy that's helping you with the Zoom and everything? Yeah. Rev Kleiman? So, he's... Yeah. Oh, was that not the thing? So, his sister messages me, and she's, she sent me your story on WhatsApp. And she said, Jimmy, don't send it to anyone. I'm like, you realize that Rev Joey posted it on his story? <laughs> like... The whole world saw it. It was so funny. Um, but you could you could um, put your phone on um, Do Not Disturb, The Moon, by settings. If you oh, don't yeah? Want it. Yeah. So you can go out, like... Even hey, guys. How's, how are my Zoomers doing? Hi, Miss Bam. Hi, I'm crazy. Whoever... We're all Sorry. crazy. Yes. Yeah. Uh -huh. Is it on? I put on the mood. Why am I still getting a video call? Huh? Swipe up. Get down, swipe down. Am I on? Swipe down. Yes. Do you hear me? Yeah. No, we're good. We're good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're good. We're good. Okay, a, a lot of people are asking if we're recording this. It means, well, now that I have Zoom, thank God it's going to be recorded. But I, I had a live the other night. I pressed um, um, record, everything was good. I posted it. Shimia Darsal, I deleted the whole thing. This, this better not be deleted. That's all I'm saying. Mom, did you give out? about but time to the Rashbi. So the, my goal with the whole Rav Shimon, basically, people, when, when you ask somebody, what's Rabbi Shimon Bar Yachai? Most people will tell you the founder of Kabbalah. Kabbalah. What's Kabbalah? <laughs> Soy, Mister, Kabbalah. What's Kabbalah? All Kabbalah means, all Kabbalah means is being able to see past the surface. When you look at the Chumash and you see it on surface level, there's a way to look inside. When you look at a body of water, you know that it looks like a big blue blanket, but underneath is the fish and sharks and uh, stingrays and who knows what's under there. Mama. <laughs> Anybody who ever went scuba diving, you can see a whole world under the water. So when you look at the body of water, the key is to know that there's a whole world that's beyond your vision. That's Rabbi Shimon. 
When you look at another person in the world, a, a Jew or a non-Jew for that matter, and you look and you can look at an external perspective, you could see a picture that meets your eye, but then you could understand that there's a world underneath. There's a big world that's unknown underneath. That's Rabbi Shimon. That's why so many people are besimcha on Lag Ba'aymer, because on Lag Ba'aymer, everyone realizes that deep inside, I'm so beautiful and I'm so amazing and I'm so pure. Whatever it looks like on the outside doesn't matter. But if you're able to look inside, you can see that beautiful shining soul, that beautiful personality, that beautiful part of every single human being and, and yid or whatever, that, that is shining so bright. But it takes Rav Shimon to see it because on the, pe most people look from like externals. They look on externals. So Rav Shimon comes along and he says, let me teach you guys Kabbalah, okay? The Kabbalah is when you look underneath and you can see the beauty. So everyone's besimcha because everyone realizes how amazing they are. So that's Wow. Am I making sense? <laughs> yes, so much sense. I wish more people made sense. <laughs> <laughs> that was so powerful. So that song, so when we dance with Rashbi, we're dancing with Rav Shimon Bar Yechai, because Rav Shimon Bar Yechai really told us how to look inside ourselves, how to look inside the whole world. So that's why we're all dancing with Rav Shimon all over the world. Mamish. I feel like, I feel like um, Rav Shimon, when he came out of, of the Mara, the cave, he th didn't everything that he and his son looked at burn. Yes, I feel like he, he was forced to, to see the depth of every single human being. Because the mistake was he got sent back in. The mistake was is that when he came out, he only associated seeing past the surface with learning Torah. He looked at learning Torah and he said, we'll see the Kabbalah in the Torah. But he didn't realize that the whole purpose of seeing past the surface of the Torah was to see past the surface of the whole world. So God sends him back in and says, relearn it. And then he comes out and he's able to see the beauty of everything. Wow, that's, yeah. that's amazing. Speaking about seeing the beauty in everything, you were able to see the beauty within yourself. You were saying like, either they, they're, they write songs or they don't. You're like, I ain't no writer. Like I never wrote a song. And then you just compose a song of brachos. You just literally went through every single bracha in town, and you're like, yeah. I got this. <laughs> so I feel like you. First of all, you have to do a little Megan for Bore. Come on, that's like, <laughs> that's epic. We're gonna get a little Bore pray. Bore priya Bore priya gabe. Bore priya Bore priya gabe. Bore mi nene zono, shako mi evidvaro. Bore mi nene zono, shako mi evidvaro. Bore mi nene sami, bore more aesh, bore beri atama. I love that. It's like if anyone forgets like what the brachas are, you just revert <laughs> to that song and we're good to go. Is that the point that just took us up if we forget a bracha? Like, Actually, it. yeah. it, it's interesting how that came about. That, well, you mentioned before that I had decided in my head that I can't write. I literally decided in my head that this is it's either something you have it or you don't. And I don't know how to write music. And it's one of those things that Yossi Green and Kalbach and the Chazanim and, you know, uh, the Beatles. <laughs> and all, the, all those kind Oi, of Oi, I'm so sorry, guys. Yeah. I can't believe it. Talk it. <laughs> you slipped. One second. I thought it was going to be a little mamish. Well, my the, the people could write. So I decided in my head that I can't, I didn't have that ability. And then what, what I realized was that what really was going on inside was that there was an ability, it was just locked. It was locked. And, and it's such a big thing to be able to unlock those things. How did I unlock it? I'm sitting one Matzah Shabbos by my Shviga's table. My wife had just had a baby and, and she, she moved in, of course. What do you call it? Kimpati? 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 So we move in. Matzah Shabbos, Lava Malka. I'm sitting by my Shviga. She's there in the kitchen. I'm having Lava Malka and I start going like this. And I'm like, hey, it's not bad. And she's like, yeah, it's nice. So I recorded it. 
Then the next part came. Dee da 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 da. Dee da 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 da. No words, absolutely no words, just the just two. Just him. Yes. I, I, re I recorded the whole thing. I'm like, it sounds good. I played it to a few friends. They looked at me like, that sounds good. The moment they said that, now this is key. This is key. The I'm moment- Take notes. This is very important. <laughs> Even ad kids, adults, especially adults, because like we only have one life. So if this is going to get them to achieve what they need to achieve. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so, so she looks at me and she's, uh, my friends, and they heard it, and they're like, that's a great song and i'm like yeah I'm like yeah it's a great song I'm like really before you know it i was writing every day another song the next day literally the next day i wrote ani litvak, ani chasid. suddenly it's i was one of my write. favorites I was yes like, what happened what happened so by somebody else telling me a good word unlocked the ability that i had that i i, I decided in my head i was done before you know it, somebody unlocked it. And it took another, the interesting part is that it took someone else to unlock it. That's an interesting. It took someone else to, to tell me how good the song was to unlock it, which is the importance of saying a good word to another person. And then I wrote that song and there was no words. But then a few weeks later, I had no words for the song. I was trying different words. I opened up the, the sitter. I was like, Ma, okay, not bad. I tried everything. What happened? One day I'm walking home from Shul Matzah Shabbos. The guy says, I have to tell you a story. I heard from Rabbi Orlovsky. You ready for this? We just had, uh, he FaceTimed us the, the other night, his son. Really? Yeah. So Rabbi Orlovsky said that he was, you know, he, he, he does a lot of Kirov and he was working with somebody who was very into the growth and coming close to religion and getting, you know, closer and closer to God and the whole spiritual thing. And this person goes up to Rabbi Orlovsky and says, Rabbi, I got to tell you. I'm ready to make the move. There's just one thing I got to ask. It's on my head. I got to figure out what this is. And the rabbi's like, what? He thought he was asking about Shabbos, Tisha B'Av, something like intense. He looks at him. He's like, what's with the twitch? He's like, the twitch? What are you talking about? He's like, the twitch. I see all the religious people. When they take a drink of water, they go like this. <laughs> right? He said, when they take something to eat, they go, and they eat. So Rabbi Olavsky, he, he was like, oh my God. He's like, yeah, this. He said, he realized he learned, you could learn from everybody. He learned from this person that a bracha to us became a movement of the mouth <laughs> as opposed to what it's really supposed to be. It just became a and a drink. We don't even think about the words. We don't think about it. He told me the story. I'm walking home. I'm like, on the spot. That's where it came from because I started wow. to try to think about it. <laughs> That is it. Easy. That's the story. I, you know what I think? First of all, it's amazing the power of our words. When I, you know, when I always say, be the reason somebody smiles, especially with your words, because you don't know. You could literally save somebody's life because by helping them unlock their greatness and recognizing that, which I want to say something about that. I'm going to go back to it in a second. But Reb Joey, I think what's so amazing is that the second you realize that you are, are capable of writing songs like you're like I got this I got yeah. this you start living your life differently you probably like everything you see or hear or you look for for things to write about like for somebody for somebody could be like oh it's just a tree you're like it's just a tree are you kidding me and like you'll write a song about it <laughs> people even call me out on it it became such an extreme that like we're, we'll be hiking somewhere and and I see a tree, and the tree is leaning on another tree, and I'm like, wow, look, this tree needs the other tree to lean. And it's like, no, a song, a song, a song. People call me <laughs> out to write song based on experiences. That's what it became. So all my songs are written based on experiences. That's, that's what it is. Yeah. You know, now that I started speaking, I also, or, or even interviews, like everything, I'm like, oh, that's a great question. That, that's a great thing to talk about in my life, because I want to make it Haley. So I, I, my whole life has transformed. And I had Charlie Harari um, a few weeks ago, and he has a book called Greatness. And they wanted it to be a different name, a different name. He's like, no, 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 no. It's like, they wanted to like become great or something. He's like, no, I needed to unlock, unlock your greatness. Like, why? You are great already. It's not like you have to be great. Someone just has to be like, Joey, you know, you got this. Wow, wow, wow. You know, I, and that you're a example of that that, that I, I think that's unbelievable gosh uh, uh, <laughs> look what my son just gave me <laughs> that's great
Oh god. The craft food the pickle. He's singing the it. The craft food the pickle. The craft food the pickle. Oh, he's the pickle. The craft food the pickle. The craft food the pickle. The craft food the pickle. Oh, he's the pickle. Perfect timer. <laughs> And that that you know what? I'm sure when you started when you start yeah, I'll take the second piece. Hold on, let me hear you. Yeah. The val- hold on, let me see if I hear. You hear me? I hear. When you first started like coming out, like when you coming out Bore, people are like <laughs> you be cray cray and you're like you think you think this is crazy? <laughs> Clock on the pickle. Clock on the pickle. I heard this, the story behind it. And I'm sure a lot, that was one of the number one questions. What's up with the pickle song? <laughs> so. so the story behind that is, is uh, interesting. It, there, there was this thing going around. Basically, I think there was like this one procedure guy. He was at a wedding and he, he took a pickle and he bit it. And he was like, crack from the pickle. He had this face of like, you know, <laughs> this, you know, like he was ecstatic. Like he just experienced little Hava Manu. <laughs> So, so it became like this shtick that everybody was doing it. Everyone was sending videos. People had the janitors in their schools and the, everybody from left to right, the mailman, the crack on the pickle, everyone was doing it. <laughs> so continuing on the topic that we we're speaking about, that everything I see now has to become a nigga. Yes, right. I was like, there's something up. This can't be random, you know? The, Rhapsodic, the Holy Rhapsodic writes that whenever Jews start doing things, there's nothing for random. There's nothing for random. There's some meaning behind it. Now, I don't know about the crack on the pickle, but for me, at least, there was a, it had to be. So I just, for me, in my head, I realized that what it meant was is that when a Jew thanks Hashem, or when anybody, for that matter, thanks Hashem, you can't just thank Hashem for the pickle. You got to <laughs> thank him for the fact that the pickle is crunchy. <laughs> I was going to ask you, Mike, the pickle song, is it like a specific, is it the Israeli pickle? Is it a dill pickle? Is it like the Haimisha pickle? It's got to be, yeah. The Israeli pickles don't make too much of a crack, unfortunately. So this is an epic fail. Who bought <laughs> this pickle? Take this. You're fired. <laughs> <laughs> you got to get like a good, like, you know, a big giant sour from Gus, Mamish. And you give a crack, Mamish. Wow, a crack. But, but the, the, I thought that, Can you imagine the Abisha created a mushy pickle? People would be like, I can't eat this. I'm like, can't I, eat this. I, I am making no hot dum on this. Uh-uh-uh. Hey. So we have to appreciate down to the finest detail. For example, the taste of food is also a detail, meaning God could have created the nutrients that you need in your life. And then you eat that, those nutrients and you survive, but he created a taste and a color and the apple looks like this. And every single detail of the thing, was, which is that extra little kiss, that extra little kiss from Hashem showing, not only do I give you what you need, I love you on top of that. So I'm going to give you the detail that makes it geschmack at the same time. That's the krach on the pickle, appreciating even the krach on the pickle, which is the crunch of the pickle. That's the whole idea. <laughs> you know, we're learning. I started this whole shimmy schmooze thing from since quarantine happened, I was like, I got, I got to do something. And we started learning and then we started bringing people in. And I was like, guys, what do you want to learn? We got, let's learn. If I'm going to be, if I'm doing a live, we're learning at something. So everybody said happiness. I want to, I want to learn about Simcha, Simcha. So just last night, my Shimmy Shmooz was about, um, happiness number one is gratitude. Gratitude, is, Shlomo Melch says, you got, you got to have, you know, Hoda Atah Kaddish Baruch People are eating pickles on the Zoom. <laughs> Wait, how can I see that? How can I, where is that? How can I see it? One second. It's Vairi Honig and her daughter. Do you see that? People are literally. Oh, oh somebody's God. holding up. <laughs> somebody's <laughs> holding up the pick, the Joey Newcomb pick. I love it. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Somebody has the pick over there. Mom, you're going to the These are true friends, Reb Joey. <laughs> that's great. Wow. So, so the, the thing that we learned yesterday is starting to be grateful for our five senses. And the first sense that we're learning about is eyesight, to, to see. We're able to see. Thank you, Hashem. We're able to see. And I feel like you, some, the, the person that you are, I, I, I called all the thank you, Hashem peeps. I was like, I need to know about Joey Newcomb. Hook me up. <laughs> and, and, and I want, uh, this, is, this is a description across the board 
what is, who is Joey Newcomb? He's awesome. He's, this is literally, I wrote it down from the voice notes. And I want to ask you a follow-up question. And you should know this, and you guys should know this. Oh, oh Brother dear. Mikey over there. Why, Brother Mikey over there? <laughs> by Moss. Brother Mikey. So they all said, you're awesome. You're geschmack. You're chilled out. No pressure with you. You make everybody feel chilled. Um, you, you always have an awesome time with him. You're relaxed. You're fun. And he loves making jokes. We got to go back to that. The joke part. We got to go back. Um, and they all said, you say, but nobody has no, any clue what it means. <laughs> <laughs> Mealy de Stusa. Mealy de Stusa would be something like, you know. <laughs> Someone has to screenshot that. That's awesome. <laughs> you know, that would be Mealy de Stusa. That's an Indian of it. Mealy de Stusa. Ah, okay, de, de Stusa. Mealy de Stusa means things that, by the way, it's, 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 uh, it's uh, what do you call it? It's sources in Chazal. It's in the words of the Gemara that certain tzaddikim, before they gave shir, they used to make a couple of jokes or make everyone laugh because when you do that, what's happening inside is you're opening up the heart to be able to accept. That's the avayim. So and for people, me, yeah, yeah, yeah. What? You know, I'm saying, people don't realize that there's a method to the madness. Oh, yeah. There's a method, like, like when I, when I do a bar mitzvah, I rock it out. I come on my tutus. When I started, I, I, I was wearing tutus and they're like, Shimmy, you look like a big fat mushroom. Like no one's, <laughs> gonna hire, no one's gonna hire you. And I was like, but this is me. And in order for me to connect to them, I need to like chill them out because the simcha sometimes are so tense. And I think that's what you do. You, you, you rock it out with the pickle oh, and, and, and you know, and then you could, you're like, you see what I did there? Now that I have your attention, ladies and gentlemen, let me speak some holy Torah. Right? Exactly. Things will get in when you're open. Things will, if you're closed, nothing will get in. That's 100%. The, 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 also, but it's more than that, though. You know, besides for, the, besides for me sharing, you know, words of Torah and saying, you know, different Torah and stuff like that and starting off with, you know, relaxing, you know, the whole thing. Sometimes, sometimes it, it, it's so holy to make somebody else smile. It's so holy to make somebody else laugh that it's it's uh, it's an avoid it with them. I, you know, I, I post on a status. I, you know, people think I'm crazy, but let them think I'm crazy. <laughs> I'll post, you know, I'll post on a status things like you know, like mom, like this is for my guitar. I'll post like you know, <laughs> and, and and people will write like you just made me smile. It's like that's it. It's enough. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know what? And the hate, the haters are gonna hate because you know why. <laughs> Because they, they're not confident enough to, to put that thing on their nose. I mean, I don't know, I don't know how many people would have, would have accepted this hat from the guy by the wedding. I don't know. <laughs> this guy, Especially he, during Corona. <laughs> that's right. He gave me this hat and he was like, he's like, you've done so much for me and my kids. I want to give you this hat. I'm like, I got to take this hat. How can I not take this hat? You know? He's commenting right now on our... No, I'm just kidding. Love you, Gavad. Oh my gosh! So first of all, your, your your shita is working because all these camps that you've been to, but I just got two, but they kept on like commenting. Camp Banim, Camp Chazak. Whoa! Um, <laughs> were you all at all these camps? Oh, meaning meaning concerts? You mean that the concerts? Yeah, 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 rocking it out. So they're yeah. all like, you you got to them on a on I thought, a. I thought you meant that I go, I actually went to Banim. As a kid. Uh, oh, did you go to Camp Bunnett? I went to Camp Bunnett. I was actually a, a waiter. I was a staff. I was a waiter. Yeah, at Camp Bunnett. Were you like the waiter that like hooked them up with mayonnaise on Friday night when you weren't allowed to? <laughs> I was actually the waiter. I don't know if I should reveal the story because I don't know who watches these things. Tell us. How many of you want <laughs> Joey to tell us? We want the hearts. Who? Everybody, thumbs up on Zoom. Who? Yeah. <laughs> we want to hear I, the story. I, 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 made, I, made some, I made some serious trouble. I... I I used to put, uh, I shouldn't even say this. I, 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 was, a, I was a waiter. You, you know, you know, Robert Weologus, Benny Weologus? Um, I should say, yeah. Uh, yes, of course. The Heiliger, yeah, sure. Storyteller, he was a teacher, whatever. I, I had like a very serious crew of people that I was a waiter. And it used to make me nervous that they were always telling me, could you bring me more chocolate? So, so <laughs> I, I used to go and take black jelly beans and put it in the chocolate. <laughs> 
Yeah. I'll never forget to this day the face mamas when they would eat that chalk. What's wrong with the chalk this week? Never forget mamas. You're like, it's a Sparty Chameen. It's not a Chalent. That's what's up. I made some trouble as a waiter. I, I hope none of the weologists are watching this because I'm going to get in trouble. It's going to get back to them. Now Now that you said this, it, it will get back to them. <laughs> Don't worry. These kids These kids are commenting that they love, they never had a better chalent in their life. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, but I wanted to ask you, like, it's so beautiful to have a Keser Shemto. I was going to say, ke all the people who come onto my Shimmy Shmooze, they're like, Keter Shemto. I'm like, why are you talking like that? They're like, Shimmy, because you, you're smarty and you don't understand my lingo. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like, I went to Camp Vega, calm it down. <laughs> but you described, like, with all these descriptions, you have to work on yourself. I don't feel like, I used to say, yeah, I was born like this, and I'm like, that's who I am. No. You have to work on it, not every day, every moment. What is it that you work on to be the person that you are? Because so many people strive to just live this happy, positive life that you, you give to others. And people want to give, and they just don't know how. Yeah, uh, it's, it's hard. It's such a hard question. I'll tell you, going, you know, I don't know. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to answer this twofold. My father, my, my family was a very happy environment so like i want to say on one hand that it's like in the sometimes i i hate i can't i don't even know how to explain this i can't stand seeing sadness it bothers me like even to myself even to myself I, i'm gonna be i'm gonna be straight up and honest you ready <laughs> uh -huh. this in, is the shimmy schmooze where anything goes <laughs> in the beginning of the whole corona thing it bothered me it bothered which me. part which part bothered you a lot of different aspects of it. How many, how much people were like suffering, um, you know, from, from tragedy. And then on top of that, like, you know, how many, the, how the whole world was affected in a way that nobody ever experienced before. And like, I had a hard time dealing with it. Like, and it was interesting. It bothered me that I had a hard time dealing with it, but it bothered me more when I saw other people like, you know, broken, but, but, uh, I remember people telling me, come on, Joe, you're the thank you Hashem guy, you're the this, you're the happy, you're like, what are you doing? Like, and and to, to be open and honest, to be open and honest, I had to sit down and look at myself and say, I'm the thank you Hashem guy. I got it, I got, you, you have to push, you know, Reb Nachman writes that when it, when it comes to Simcha, it's not like just, hey, be for Simcha, it's like, it's like actual work. It's like get your. They, they don't work. get it. They don't get it. It's hard work. You have to learn. You have to like fight and persevere, and, right. and that's not just I, not just every day. It's every moment. Like you could wake up, you're like, I got this. Today is the day, and then like you go out of your house and someone's like, Hey, <laughs> you clearly did it, and I'm like, uh, you ruined my day, and I have to work again on building that simcha. Yeah, it takes gavura. It takes gavura is 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 an Indian of strength, self strength. When you build yourself up, you know, in the Vardic, in the Vardic, they used to walk around and and like put like a stain on their jacket, and they'd walk around with a stain. Top to lower it upstairs. Yeah. The, the idea of the stain wasn't like you know I'm nothing. The idea of the stain was is that you're gonna look at me, say that I'm crazy, and I don't care. It takes gavura to come to self. It takes strength. It takes work. It takes. It, it, it's not it's not an easy thing it's not an easy thing but but you know you know i i do feel like you know my father you know the environment of, of the house that i grew up in was always so basimcha but but besides for that it, it's definitely something that needs to be worked very hard i mean it's not you know i don't know i, I don't even know how to explain it i don't know how to explain it that's why all i could do is is try to give for myself to make other people basimcha, and then i'm good then it makes me happy you know what i'm saying and also, I, I want to add that when we're always, not always, but we try to be as happy as we can. Yeah. When, yeah. Whenever, we try to be happy whenever we can and make people so happy that when we're not, then people are like, is everything okay? And I'm like, yeah, I just, I, I literally, like, if I'm tired, you know, I just, I just need one hour of sleep and I'll, I'll be back to myself and like, Shimmy, what's wrong? I know you, talk to me. I'm like, dude, <laughs> I'm really just tired. And they're like, Come on, you have to talk about your feelings. I'm like, I wasn't upset before. Now I'm upset. That's another, <laughs> another aspect of dealing right with just always trying to be on.
Yeah, yeah. But the, a big A to again, you're never going to hear this from a from a from a from you know. I don't know. I mean, Rav Nachman speaks about mili deshtusa, the concept of like shtusim. It's so important to be besimcha that whatever it takes to break yourself out. Like, let's say you're sitting in your house and you're down. Something's bothering you, depressed. If you dance around the house for five minutes, like, yes. guaranteed in three minutes you'll be smiling. Yes. So, but but the, then it becomes then it becomes a beautiful thing. That it's not like silly and late saunas and this. You just brought yourself out of a place that's dangerous. Right. You know? Some people are saying there's, there's like a few minutes left. That's not cool. Do you have do you have like a little bit more time or no? I do. I do. Thank you, Hashem. Yeah. So hold on. <laughs> This, so as soon as I get my, uh, my timer, I will end off the live and we'll come right back on. Okay. Well, okay. And we'll stay on the Zoom. Because Zoomers, you got connect. How many of you want Reb Joey to stay on? Show <laughs> me your, your thumbs. Look how many thumbs, Reb Joey. Look at them cheering for you. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. <laughs> we can't see you on Instagram. All we see is hearts. So we, we believe you. Um. <laughs> So hold on, I have, I have a, 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 an amazing question for you. Yeah. So we're gonna, we're, I think I'm gonna hang up because I don't want it to delete on me. So by the way, can I just tell you, I'm gonna end off this live with this. My other live, I saved it. Everything was great. People watched it. There were like a few thousand viewers um, that watched it. And I just wanted to, to, to transfer it from my, my post to IGTV, okay? And I deleted it by mistake and it was gone. And everyone's like, where's the second, where's the second one? I should cut it now? Okay, they tell me to cut it now. Okay, okay. Guys, we'll see you in a minute.